Howdy gamers, let's talk about the runes for Ringar of Top and Jungle. Um, starting off with Top Lane as it's the most basic and I feel like it's the most uh, clear cut. It's going to be Conquer and then Conquer is going to put you in the Precision Tree where your best option is going to be Triumph. Um, probably Alacrity, Tenacity is fine, but Alacrity is giving you better values in most case. Bloodline is also fine as the Lifesteal is generally more useful in the top lane as you're going for lane trades more often. So. If, uh, if you're playing into a lane, though, where the enemy can retaliate multiple auto attacks, champions obviously like Fiora, Irelia, I think Alacrity is probably going to be giving you better values, but against champions where you can take smaller trades against them. And most champions in the top lane, Bloodline is going to be giving you better value, especially where so much of what you're doing is autoing. And then for the fourth rune, I think in the top lane, you're best off with uh, Last Stand 2, as you're taking so many trades onto the enemy laner, and then you're skirting around um, low amounts of health, and then turning the fight onto the enemy with your empowered W. So with last stand, you're going to be getting more damage whenever you're lower. And then if you're playing top lane, I think that you're better off going with the laning tools offered in Resolve with Bone Plating and Revitalize, making it even more brutal against the lane opponent as with Bone Plating and Revitalize, Bone Plating is giving you more effective HP if the enemy hits you or whenever you dive onto the enemy and they try to retaliate. And then Revitalize has really good synergy with your W. And a lot of what you're doing is taking a trade onto the enemy and then building up Empower W and then just healing all the damage that they dealt to you. So a lot of what is annoying about Ringar Top, these runes and powers. So going back to the Keystone in Conqueror, Conqueror gives you AD for attacking the enemy. So your basic attacks are spells that deal damage to enemy champions, grant you two stacks of Conqueror. And then the attack damage offered is based on your level. Conqueror stacks up to 10 times and then whenever it's fully stacked, you heal for 15% of the damage that you deal. Ringar stacks this up really quickly. You jump, W, E, auto, Q, and then your empowered Q will have the benefits of Conqueror when it's fully stacked. And then you can also have the extra benefit of your empowered Q giving you attack speed because you have more AD built up from Conqueror. Um, and then you have to be out of combat for, I think it's six or like eight seconds with Conqueror for it to die off. So it's really easy to keep Conqueror going whenever your laning top lane as you can constantly just be jumping onto the enemy from the bush and then when you do so once you've jumped onto them um, you have the advantage of building up conquer against them so if they retaliate even if they have conquer of their own um, they have to build it up for themselves and you're just going to be at more stacks of conquer therefore having more ad or having more healing than they do quicker where you also spend your abilities, it's just a win-win as your abilities are going on cooldown, so then they're going to be coming up faster if the fight would become more extended or your just one jump would become extended. With Triumph, your takedowns restore 12% of your missing health and grant you an additional 20 gold. Since you're spending your HP as your main resource is Ringar, um, having that regen will help you in a 1v1 scenario if you're trying to turret dive. It will help you in a 2v2 scenario as you kill one target, it gives you so much HP back, especially if you're lower and in combination with Revitalize and your Empowered W. Um, just works really well to keep you alive, like when things go to the wire. And then in a team fight scenario, it's even more amplified as you can get onto multiple targets and then even just getting a killer assist on one is going to give you the 12% missing health regen. And then through that, you inevitably can be more useful as you can have more confidence to jump on someone if you have more health to play with. Again, with the third runes, they're all pretty good, but in the top lane, I think Bloodline's going to be giving you better value in most lanes. Alacrity is really good, though, as the attack speed offered goes pretty far as you want to be itemizing mostly attack damage. And especially in a solo lane, um, attack speed gives you a little bit of scaling, but Bloodline becomes... A pretty good laning tool especially in the top lane you're going to stack it up really fast and then have access to that lifesteal and it's also going to make it so that you don't have to itemize lifesteal for ringar until like way 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 later in the game so it's a really really strong tool for top lane ringar as he's basically always attacking his lane opponent with legend tenacity you already have your empowered w to dodge cc so the value of this just goes way down um, and then to lose out on the laning tool in bloodline would just feel way worse. The reason I'd recommend Last Stand over Coupe de Grasse is because in most cases in the top lane, you're playing into bruisers or tanks, and Last Stand just gives you more value against them. You're not instantly killing those champions, and with Coupe de Grasse, you deal 8% more damage to champions who are below 40% health. Once you spend your full rotation of your abilities, maybe you have like a bruiser or a tank at 40% health, in which case Coupe de Grasse would only be amplifying the damage on your auto attacks. 
and then maybe one more ability to cast. So the 8% doesn't really go that far. With Last Stand, you gain a 5 to 11% increased damage to champions while you are below 60% HP. And since that's a lot of what you're doing on Rengar is trading your health initially and then spending all of your abilities, it's way easier to get value out of Last Stand, especially in Bruiser matchups, champions like Mordekaiser, Orn, etc. They're not going to die, but they can't necessarily kill you, so then your auto attacks against them and all other abilities that you're casting, usually the second rotation of your abilities is going to be dealing just more damage. It will also help you in team fights as, again, just staying alive and then dealing more damage. Since you're dealing more damage with Last Stand, you're going to be healing more from Conqueror and from Bloodline too. So all of these just go really hand in hand. With Resolve, it's kind of the same thing. More effective HP from Bone Plating and then more healing from Revitalize. And I really think this is about all you should run in on Rengar top. You could run something like Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter, but to lose out on the laning tool and Bone Plating and Revitalize, or not even to lose out, let's say you trade off this, um, you get 7 Lethality and 6 Magic Penetration whenever you jump, and then you gain um, healing on the damage dealt by your abilities. That's okay, but you do have to stack up Ravenous Hunter. Since you're playing top lane Rengar, it's harder to get unique takedowns for the Bounty Hunter stacks for Ravenous Hunter to get the more percentage damage from your abilities, and then you're only really going to be healing from the second rotation of your abilities, which is basically just like a Q, or maybe a W. So it's really not that much. And with Sudden Impact, yeah, you add more damage, but it's better just to heal more damage and block more damage for top Ringar than it would be to deal more, um, more burst damage with Sudden Impact as you're not just uh, you're not just looking to burst them, you're looking to jump on them like five or six times before you actually kill them. Because you can achieve winning lane states and you don't even have to kill your lane opponent to be winning this top, top Rengar. And I don't see any of the secondary runes really outweighing that. If you're playing into something really brutal um, like Rumble and Mordekaiser, maybe you'd go Nullifying Orb plus Absolute Focus or Nullifying Orb plus Transcendence. Um, Nullifying Orb giving you a magic damage shield whenever you get low, and then Transcendence giving you 10% cooldown reduction, so you get a scaling tool even in lanes that aren't as dominant. For Ringar Jungle runes, it's basically the same thing, um, but Ringar Jungle benefits more from, or can benefit more from running Electrocute, um, but I think the best keystone for Ringar Jungle is Conquer, as with Electrocute, um, you end up in a situation in which like you're already going to overkill champions anyways and then your whole purpose becomes to kill one target as Ringar and Ringar can be more useful than that as whenever you jump onto a target you're going to deal about the same damage with or without electrocute because you can still run sudden impact in the secondary runes and then with that um, where you would be missing out on conquer as your keystone you'd be missing out on the AD built up from jumping on someone and you're not gonna like, even if you instantly kill it one target, then you basically cease to function as a champion after that, as all your abilities are on cooldown, and then your auto attacks don't matter as much as there's not as much AD behind them, and you also miss out on the, uh, the secondary runes from precision. So you really do narrow what Ringar can achieve with, uh, with this rune page comparatively, but there might be spots for it as Sometimes all that would be required from you in a team comp would be to deal or to instantly kill one target on the enemy team Whether it be the mid laner or the AD carry or even a support. So I don't think this rune page is useless for Rengar But in solo queue, I think conquer goes a lot further and also opens up your ability to really 1v9 a game regardless of the circumstances Because in a defensive situation electrocute becomes way worse than conquer would be in a neutral situation electrocute is kind of worse than Conquer would be. Only in an offensive situation in which you're already winning does Electrocute give you a, lot of, a little more value. Maybe into some Enchanter supports too, where they have um, shields and heals behind them, maybe you could make an argument for Electrocute as the extra damage offered. Wouldn't be, you wouldn't just be overkilling the target that you're jumping on, but maybe Electrocute could add the extra damage to actually finish off a target through their heals, through their shields, etc. But most likely not. As how you're gonna, let's say you're playing against a Yumi, you're gonna get through an exhaust, a barrier, a heal, and a and like and a Yumi heal. Like you sure? 
whatever, man. For the secondary runes, um, if you're running Electrocute, I think you're best off with going with Coup de Grasse plus either Legend Alacrity or Triumph. I think Triumph's going to be your best bet as, again, you're just looking to burst someone and then get out and then wait for your cooldowns as so much of what you'd be doing with Electrocute. And probably the way you're building, too, would rely on that. So with Triumph, again, you restore 12% of your missing health. In this case, um, you, it would function as like a get out of jail free card. You dove into the entire enemy team, you killed the one target, and then like you flash out or you walk away somehow. Then the little bit of extra health gained from Triumph is going to let you survive. The extra 20 gold gained from a killer assist is just kind of icing on the cake. And then Coupe de Grasse gains extra functionality as it's going to help with your just one shot. That's, a, that's the whole purpose. Just empower that one shot even more. Might as well. Um, if you're going for something more um, more scaling oriented, as if you're if you're going with electrocute, you're probably overkilling a lot of champions anyways. You could run free boots and then futures market, futures market helping you get Tiamat and uh, all the lethality items at a faster rate, and then magical footwear just saving you the cost of boots, therefore accelerating your build path. As if you're investing into Tiamat, you're slowing it down naturally. So this helps offset a lot of that cost, and then you basically give up um, a bit of damage onto the single targets um, and a bit of survivability for a lot of economic uh, items, which is inevitably giving you more, more damage um, and more scaling potential with this. And then for the adaptive runes, it's always going to be attack speed, adaptive force, and you can run magic resist on Rengar if you can clear well enough on him if you're playing into an AP matchup in the jungle, champions like Elise, uh, Karthus, etc. But defaultly, you're probably going to go with armor. So this, if you're running Electrocute, I suppose Magical Footwear and Futures Market is going to go, going to be the best for you. Um, the reason you wouldn't run something like Nimbus Cloak and like Water Walking like other junglers do is because Rengar is either like on the target or he isn't, and the utility of like skirmishing for a scuttle is lessened and if he's going to win a fight it's going to be around a bush anyways and then the utility of nimbus cloak where you get to stay on a target also kind of loses a lot of value if you're instantly killing them when you jump on them as you don't need to stay on them they're dead and then if you didn't kill them um a blue smite and then extra movement speed towards them isn't going to let you finish them off because you have to dedicate yourself into the entire enemy team in most cases so i think that loses a lot of value the reason you want to run something like, uh, geez, I don't even know, like bone plating, revitalize, like you're just missing out on a lot of, a lot of uh, build acceleration through inspiration or the extra damage and an extra survivability. So that's that for the electric cube page. I, I don't think that should be your page for Ringar jungle though, as with conquer in the jungle, it functions the same way in the top lane where it's going to be giving you the bonus AD. And then it's also going to give you extra functionality to exist in fights after your initial jump because especially like it, it really opens up your gameplay as Ringar because you can do a lot more than just jump onto one target and instantly kill them. You can still do that with Conquer, especially if you have an itemization advantage. But if the game's neutral or you're losing, Conquer is going to give you so much more value as it's going to let you contend with enemies even if they're stronger than you. Um, you can, because there's stats offered from the rune, even if you're behind in items, it will still help you contend with them. And where there's so much behind every single level that Rengar gets in his base stats, you can, again, contend with enemies even if they're ahead of you. And that's so strong in solo queue. You have this comeback potential. And then if you're winning, it's all even better as the stats offered scale with your level. So you're going to be getting more AD for playing the game properly, for getting kills. Um, farming the jungle properly and then maybe side laning too even if you're the jungle and once you jump on someone having the where the conqueror builds up so fast and then is going to be mostly empowering your auto attacks after the full combo helps you in 2v2 scenarios which is a lot of what you're doing especially in season 10 is 2v2ing with the solo lanes so i think there's a lot more utility in conquer um, because of its offensive neutral and defensive capabilities I think that it's so easy for Rengar to build it up, and since Rengar is already killing champions regardless, I think that to run Electrocute in his runes in the jungle role, you really need a purpose to do so. Um, you really just have to be this, if the team comps call for it, then it's fine. I think it's fine to have um, Rengar just one shot, one target, but most of the time in solo queue, 
it's you can be a lot more than that and then if you are then you're just doing yourself a lot a, a better service and then you're also doing your team a better service as if you can deal damage to more champions you're just more useful so again with conquer it puts you in the precision tree um and the jungle i think attack speed is going to be more useful than bloodline as you don't need the lifesteal in the jungle and you don't need the lifesteal to function as a trading tool as you're not laning constantly so i think the attack speed is going to help you more as once you again build up conquer having more auto attacks is going to be more important and then alacrity is also going to help you clear the jungle faster and also do objective faster it's going to help you just have more auto attacks all the time and the jungle as well i think coupe de grasse is also going to be more important as pretty similar to alacrity you're just going to be able to get more auto attacks off um, and then through that you gain more access to the damage amplification from coupe de grasse and coupe de grasse also helps you finish off a target as you might not be instantly killing them um, with conquer but you're going to be finishing them off in like two or three auto attacks after you jump onto them so might as well be insta killing them you know and then for these secondary runes i think your best bet is going to be domination with sudden impact and then ultimate hunter relentless hunter could be okay but i think ultimate hunter gives you a ton of value as having your ult off cooldown just means that you can be more impactful on ringar you don't have to kill a champion every single time with your ult just ulting for the for the movement speed to run to a lane to respond to a gank ulting just to deal the damage to the enemy laner and then you and your laner can go to another lane or go to an objective or go into the enemy jungle there's so much utility in having your ult up more often that it's just going to pay for itself versus having out of combat movement speed on ringar champions that make the best use out of out of combat movement speed are roaming champions like like a talon like a kiana etc ringar is really like farming or in a lane and then if he's in a lane he needs to have his ult up and if he's in a bush it, he just has to hope that the enemy walks into him so i suppose if you are playing at a higher level and your entire game plan would revolve around being in position to counteract where the enemy is going to go maybe relentless hunter would help you because it would give you the out of combat movement speed to get into position to actually catch the guy out in positions that you, he otherwise wouldn't expect but at that point you're kind of cheesing ultimate hunter is great man with ultimate hunter it's based off a bounty hunter rune or bounty hunter stacks so with bounty hunter each unique takedown is going to give you more of a percentage cooldown on your ultimate so for every unique takedown you get four percent uh, cooldown reduction on your ult and that's built up pretty fast for ringar and and also with ringar's kit you're also building up um bonus percentage attack damage whenever you get a kill or assist too so it just works so naturally with this kit with sudden impact pretty synergistic too as whenever you exit stealth use a dash leap blink teleport so anytime you jump from a bush anytime you ult um or yeah anytime you jump from your ult too or flash you can proc sudden impact and with sudden impact you gain seven lethality and six magic penetration for five seconds um and then it's on a four second cooldown so with the five seconds you have enough time to have a full rotation of your abilities and also get multiple auto attacks off where ringar's w deals magic damage you're also getting value out of the magic penetration too regardless of the enemy's itemization so that's really nice and yeah Sudden Impact's acting as like a minor keystone worth of damage for Ringar. And in combination with Conqueror 2, works really well as you're building up bonus AD and then you're getting extra lethality. So lethality is kind of helping the bonus AD built up from Conqueror. And then also helping the attack speed from Alacrity, helping you get enemies low for Coupe de Grasse. It's all just really, really, really synergistic. And then for the adaptive runes, it's pretty much the same. Uh, attack speed, attack damage, and then armor. To to like i don't know man to outweigh these with inspiration second if you're running conquer i don't think is that good because you get a lot of damage from sudden impact and then you get a lot of utility through having your ult up more often with ultimate hunter to trade that off for 300 free gold and then to get your tia mat earlier i don't see it being worth in almost every single game state um yeah because the economic value of this has to outweigh the damage value of sudden impact which is just so much for jungle ringar and then the utility of having the ult up more often which is so much of what ringar needs so 
Yeah, that's my thoughts on Rengar runes. I really do think Conqueror like just makes him an outstanding champion and electrocutes like gimping his purpose. It empowers like a worse player to one shot a target that they would have killed otherwise. Um, but with Conqueror, you can really just survive longer in fights. You deal more damage and then are more useful because of that in so many aspects. Like Rengar is really not that bad of a champion right now, but uh, yeah, I wish more people would run this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I answer literally all of them. If this video helped you, leave a like on the video helps me. And if you're interested in, in watching me play or talk about League of Legends, you can check out my Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash sorrynelson. Links in the description. Yo, shout out to Chaos Rain. 